Today's class is about nomenclature of organohalides, aldehydes, and ketones. If you're following this series of videos, uh, I would like you to take note of the fact that on the yesterday's example, which is um, on the tail end of yesterday's example, I incorrectly named uh, a halide having counted the wrong chain. I counted it as an ethyl group, as an ethyl chain, but in fact the longest chain is uh, propane. So the proper name for this molecule, 220A on our handout, is uh, 2-methyl-2-bromopropane. The longest continuous chain is a propane, it's substituted with a bromine at the second position, as well as a methyl group. The second example, I drew it the way it appears in the question, then I redrew it in bond line notation, so I, the carbons are simply shown as um, elbows connecting to the double bond. There are three chlorine atoms on the molecule. The longest continuous carbon chain is ethane, but it's, a, it's an alkene, so it ends in ene, and the, the chlorine substituents are 1, 1, 2, trichloroethene. Third example, uh, we have a fluorine atom on a cyclopentane with a double bond in it. Alkenes take priority over halides, so the numbering starts over here. It continues through the double bond to the halide. And we, when uh, the halide is fluorine, we call it fluoro as a prefix. 3-fluoro-cyclopentene is the name of this molecule. The third example, D, is a benzene ring substituted with two chlorine atoms. Uh, the alkyl group takes precedence over the halides, so the first position is where the methyl group is. Benzene with a methyl group has its own name. It has a trivial name. It's called toluene. So you see that there's two ways to name this, well, actually three ways to name this molecule. You can name it 3,5-dichloromethylbenzene. But because methylbenzene is also known as toluene, you can also call it 3,5-dichlorotoluene. Or you can even call it meta-dichlorotoluene. Meta meaning that the substituents are located Removed. This would be ortho substituted. This would be meta substituted. And lastly, you can have para di substituted if they're on the opposite ends of the molecule. That only applies for benzene. You don't use that for anything but benzene. E shows a molecule of butane with uh, iodine atoms on either end of it, so it's called 1,4-diiodobutane. And the last example is a methane with fluorochlorine atoms. It's got a trivial name, carbon tetrachloride. It's been used for decades, but the official IUPAC name is tetrachloromethane. The next section deals with ketones. With ketones, you, have, you put an own ending on the end of the molecule uh, name. Uh, there are two ways of math naming ketones. You can say alkyl, alkyl, ketone. You write three separate words. Or you look for the longest continuous chain, name the substituents, and put an own ending on it. So here we have a benzene ring attached to an ethanone. So we call it one phenyl because the phenyl group, this phenyl group here, um, basically, a benzene ring with a pendant bond is called phenyl. Benzene ring with a methyl group, which is, then has a, uh, a pendant bond, is called benzyl. This is worthwhile memorizing because it occurs within a frequency that it's, um, it's good to know the trickle name for them. You can also call this molecule phenyl methyl ketone. The three separate words. Uh, sometimes the, that's the more common usage. But this is more in keeping with the IUPAC mentality. This shows a molecule with five carbons, uh, a five carbon chain and the longest, longest chain. There's a ketone at the third position, chlorine at the fourth. Ketones take precedence over halides, so you would call it four chloral, three pentanone. You could also name it one chloroethyl. See, there are two ethyl groups attached to a ketone as well. You could, if you look at it that way, you could say one chloroethyl. This is the first position off the ketone, um, off the carbonyl. And then this is the ethyl. So one chloroethyl, ethyl, ketone. Three separate words. To 
uh, 21C, we have a propane as the longest chain with a ketone at the first position, and there's a cyclohexyl group attached to the carbonyl, so you could call that one cyclohexyl propanone, or you could call it cyclohexyl ethyl ketone. Three separate words again. D, we have a ketone with a six carbon chain, double bond at the fourth position, the ketone at the third position, so we would call that 5-methyl, here's the methyl at the fifth, uh, sorry, here's the methyl at the fifth position. I should erase these numbers for clarity. There's a methyl group at the fifth position. Uh, the double bond occurs at the fourth position, the keep, so you say 3 ohm for the ketone, and it's a hexene to indicate the fact that it's a, uh, an alkene. You could also call it ethyl, here's the ethyl part, 2-methyl, 1-propenyl. When you have a double bond containing substituent, it has to end in eel, but also has to have the ene in it to show that it's a keep, um, an, al an alkene. So an alkene substituent, three carbons long, would be propanyl. The one signifies where the um, where the double bond starts. The two signifies where the methyl group is. I forgot to write the L for the methyl group. So it's two methyl. Here's this, the two methyl. If I was to renumber it so as to give this um, name priority, then I would call this one, two, three, because the substituents are named after the first carbon at the branch point. In the next example, we have a cyclic ketone with a hydroxyl and a chlorine. The highest priority group on this cyclohexane would be the ketone group, followed by the alcohol, followed by the halide. So we would call it 5-chloro. Again, we try to alphabetize these substituents. 5-chloro, 4-hydroxy, cyclohexanone. Remember, when alcohol is a substituent, call it hydroxy. When it's the main group, you put all as the uh, suffix. The next section, we have aldehydes. Aldehydes have the ending al added to the longest chain in the, uh, in the molecule. The longest chain here is three carbons long. It's got two, um, so, sorry, it's got four carbons in length, one, two, three, four, and there's a methyl substituent at the second position. Also, the double bond starts at the second position. So you call it a butene al, the two refers to the fact that the double bond is here, and the methyl group is also at the second position. So you call it 2-methyl, two 2-butene-al. Two 22B, we have an aldehyde as well, with a methyl substituent and a chlorine substituent. It's five carbons long. Uh, the methyl substituent is at the second position after the carbon that is containing the aldehyde. You'll notice when you draw an aldehyde in bond line notation, you don't have to draw the hydrogen. Do, it's fine, but when you draw a bond line notation, just draw the double the C double bond O, the carbonyl part, and then connects it to the carbon is there. We know there's a hydrogen there, but we don't necessarily draw it. So we would call this 3 chloro, 2 methyl, uh, and we put chloro first because C comes before M, and it's pentanal. This is a two carbon chain with the now the two aldehyde groups. You could call it 1,2-ethane diol, but uh, there's no need to put the numbering because the only way the molecule can be uh, drawn is this way, so you, it's, uh, it's superfluous to write the number, so you can call it simply ethane diol, ethane diol. Um, this is a cyclobutane with an aldehyde on it. Whenever an aldehyde is added to a ring, the ending of the, of the molecule's name has the the word carbaldehyde. So you would call this cyclobutane carbaldehyde. In this molecule we have three groups. The highest priority group we have to determine is the aldehyde followed by the ketone. When a ketone is a substituent, you put oxo as the, uh, as the prefix. So we would call, we start the numbering at the aldehyde and we put carbaldehyde because it's on the ring. So six bromo 2 oxo, here's the ketone, the oxo, cyclohexane carbaldehyde. 